I want to do a little video here on this Dreadnought pistol that I own. It's a Spanish copy of a Smith & Wesson Model 10 or Smith & Wesson M&P as we know it. And it's in 38 Long Colt. It's basically a five shot miniature version of the M&P or Model 10. I'm going to just show some of the markings in that. They made these in Spain in about the 1920s or 30s and they were quite popular in that period. There's many different ones, different copies of different in different quality of guns and all that stuff. This one is marketed as the Dreadnought. Some of them I've seen have no markings at all on them other than like a serial number and that's about it. This gun at the top is a Smith & Wesson M&P from World War II in 38 Smith & Wesson but the one in 38 Special the um, the pistol is uh, exactly the same. It's, it's, the, it's a full size duty pistol like everyone knows the iconic gun all over the world the standard police arm and so I'll just show some of the the features of this gun everything in it is a is just a copy I'd say 90 percent of this gun is just like a miniaturized copy of the full-size Smith & Wesson like none of the parts interchange but they look identical if you saw a photo side by side with the with the um, Smith & Wesson part you wouldn't be able to tell it was actually for one of these smaller guns or not because it's an exact copy the only difference that I can readily point out other than the size obviously is the uh, grip in the in the grip area you can see how it has this little extra the grip comes down all the way to here and on the Smith & Wesson the frame goes all the way through it's a split the grip is uh, completely split I think the reason why they did that with the smaller gun is if you look at the front how the split goes it looks to be on par with the rest of the gun as being in scale to the full size gun and to make it a little better for your hand they added this extra piece here I don't know why they put the, the back strap up so high but they did anyways. Mine's a little uh, beat up and um, a, it seems to be worse for wear but actually this is a very good quality gun. It's 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 well built other than uh, I'm going to show the markings here and uh, so anyways well here's the markings. If you look at the trademark it it says trademark and then there's um, some kind of gibberish down here it doesn't really say it says like rugs pat sif and the smith and wesson symbol is the w is easily to discern but the s is um the w is easy to discern but the s is a little more um like hard to to see in there and you can see the um, the markings on the barrel say 38 long and uh, CTC I'm not really sure what the CTC is supposed to stand for and it's very uh, very roughly done in there the barrel markings which are the, the most important you can see it says on there uh, revolver dreadnought and every mark it's almost like it's hand done I, I'm I'm guessing that they stamped it out with individual letters to make the to make the actual stamp it wasn't even like a, a singular stamp maybe because it's it's very very primitive how they did the marking and then underneath it's got all this gibberish here which is supposed to be like a patent date which is it's really meaningless because they this was um, to get around the patents of the Smith and Wesson like they 
I'm not sure the, the whole story of these Spanish made guns. I'm sure they were sued for them and told to stop making them, but they just kept making them anyways. And I, I don't really know why they decided to do what they did with the markings because anybody who picks this up, if you went to the store, even in the 1920s and you picked this gun up and it said like revolver dreadnought and it had all these gibberish numbers, I don't think you would mistake in it for being an actual Smith & Wesson. So I'm not really exactly sure why they put the markings on the way they did. Um, it would make more sense to me if they actually copied the actual Smith & Wesson name and put it on there, but whatever, that's not really important. And here's the Smith & Wesson, how it's, how it's written on there. Hopefully you'll be able to see it here. It's kind of rough just because this gun is so old. It's Some of the markings are a little rougher than they originally were. And the gun is serialized. I think it's serialized underneath the grip, but I'm not going to take it off. It is serialized on the, the strap here. And then just like the Smith & Wesson, underneath the the cylinder you can see the the numbers and it's even on the the um, the little arm here and on the back of the the cylinder as well so it's a it's a quality built gun it's this is just a very it's just a very much a miniature copy of a, a Smith and Wesson everything on it is nice and this gun is is probably closing on 100 years old or at least 90 years old and I've shot this particular gun and it's held up well. I've shot it with 38 specials in here um, and it works. Cool. I've shot it with 38 specials in here and it, it seems to shoot just fine. So the quality of these guns, I guess it varies. This particular one is, is very nice. Oh, one other marking is here on the, the medallion again it's gibberish the W is easy to make out but the the S is just barely even noticeable in there it's missing from the the other side of course just to give an idea of the proper markings you can see on the the Smith & Wesson how the S is very discernible it's, it's not um, like being hidden in any way in there and then of course this is made in the USA and the proper markings for the barrel the Smith & Wesson CTG along with the proper markings on the barrel with the patent dates with Smith & Wesson written on the top in the Smith & Wesson trademark You'll find the same serial numbers, but the serial numbers obviously on the Smith & Wesson are um, accurate and they, they actually mean something. This one is, this one is actually marked to the American, it has, an, it has a serial number, it's a pre, um, it's a pre-victory model, I believe they called them, and it's got an American proof stamp on the bottom but it is not in 38 Smith or uh, it's not in 38 special it's in 38 Smith and Wesson or the 38 200 which is actually a British cartridge so I don't know why the Americans have the the proof stamp on it but that's not really what my video is about it's about the the Spanish copy which I enjoy shooting this gun it's kind of fun because it's it's such a small pistol and I've seen people criticize them for being not good quality or dangerous to shoot, um, things like this. And I believe the reason why that is, uh, Mike Bellevue just did a video on reloading the 38 Long Colt. And even with these other guns, some of them are in different calibers, 8mm Labelle, uh, 3220, I believe it is. In a Mike Bellevue's video about the 38 Long Colt, he shows in there how back in the old days, like the 38 Long Colt cartridges are not all 
equally created. The early there's an early type and then a later type. And they change the sizes of the cases. Um, there's a, even a 38 short Colt with this particular gun. 38 Smith and West or 38 Special will fit in this gun. 38 Smith, Smith and Wesson will not, but 38 special will fit in here as long as it it fits the cylinder it's able to fit in there and I believe this is the reason why these guns have a bad reputation because people are putting the wrong cartridges in them like I know myself I've put the wrong cartridges in there but I believe that this gun is strong enough and able to handle it and it's not like I abuse it or anything I do have a supply of 38 long colt now which is what I shoot with it all the time but just to test it I was using 38 special and if you were using that all the time or using uh, plus P rounds just the wrong cartridge for the gun you can damage it and it's nothing it's, it shouldn't be a reflection on the gun if you're putting the wrong cartridge in, in it and having it uh, damaged or, or broken it's not a reflection on the gun it's because you're using the wrong cartridge which um, I it's unfortunate they got that bad reputation but they're fun little guns and and they're so cheap and they're available and they're nice to just sort of um, work on or you can practice on them and so I just wanted to make a video about this interesting little gun if you see the difference in size you'll see how it's very much just a miniature copy it's like a I don't know I would say it's it's bigger than three quarters the size the 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 full-size gun is a five inch barrel and this gun is a four and a half inch barrel so that's the difference in size. I don't know if somebody can work that out in math how big the size difference would be but it's a big enough size difference that this gun has to be in five shots so anyways I thought I would just make a, a video on this interesting little gun and uh, other than that uh, thank you for watching